You know when a, a man is a user, they like undefined relationship. That's how you know someone wants to use you. They will never define it. But a man who has good, who has integrity, will even when you are thinking, he will say, oh no, I'm not dating you. You are my sister. You are my friend. They will define it. So sometimes the conversation will look as if we are dating again. I didn't understand. I was confused. So one day I was like, okay, now said, will you come and see me? By this time I was living in Magodo phase one. And at that time, Magodo phase one was like lucky. So you to meet, I now felt like, you know, maybe two of us, our head is now correct. Um, maybe we can now do things better. So I went to visit him. But as the Lord will have it, it was almost as if God said, you know what? In Gabriel, upgrade this girl's lesson. We need to wake her up. We need to put sense in her head. He never mentioned that he was engaged. Yes, he was engaged to be married. In fact, they had fixed a date. But he never mentioned or gave the impression that there was a woman in his life. So I got there that morning. I entered the apartment. I, I felt like a little mother, you know, to start a family. In, you know, in Magodo Vezuwa. Somebody else's husband's house. I was examining, so I sat down. The younger brother was there, say, hello, it'll be a while. Ah, you didn't even check up on us. In my mind, I was like, all of you plan together to break my heart. I said, I didn't check up on you anyway. Now we can open a new page. But the lady showed up unannounced. Oh, yes. Yes, glory to God. The lady showed up unannounced. And this friend of mine went from being a friend to me, somebody that we have been talking, and treated me almost like I was a total stranger. I was left in the living room, completely ignored. There was no decency to say, I'm sorry, I have a guest now. We need to have conversations in the room. There was nothing. I was there. It was so embarrassing. It was a younger brother that now saw that this is uncomfortable, was not trying to engage me in conversations. After some awkward minutes, I carried my bag and said, Ileya, off to my father's house. So I said I was leaving. And I said, okay, you know what? Let me drop you at the gate. And as he was dropping me at the gate, he said, you know, I'm sorry. Da, 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 da. I had to do this. And you know, let me tell you something. Can I tell you the truth? That day, when I got down from the car, I felt like a weight had been taken off me. I did not feel bad. In fact, I, myself and Joseph were having a conversation. I said, Holy Spirit, you had to go that route, Abby, to say my head must be correct. You had to show me in plain colors. And let me tell you something. That picture I painted now, to most of you, looks like, look like an embarrassing situation. It was not. It was salvation. Because his intentions for me were not right. It was God looking out for his daughter to say, call that babe, let her come. Because this guy may lead this girl on to a point of a higher heartbreak. So that's just to tell you that I'm not teaching you theory this evening. You can see, how many of you have experienced my own kind of breakfast? You see that my breakfast is in first class. Uh -huh. So now let's get down to the lesson. So like I said earlier on, heartbreaks are inevitable. It happens even in marriages. If you see people who have been married for more than two years, they've experienced it because we are not perfect. Sometimes people do not have noble intentions towards you. Yes. From the word go, they knew that they had no good intention towards you. But sometimes people mean well. It just does not go out, go as planned. People dream of falling in love. They never dream of breaking up. Have you ever seen someone get married and as they are walking down the aisle, they are saying, this man, I'm going to fight him. It's just three months I want to spend with him. People dream of falling in love. They're excited. These days, you know, men will cry when saying their vows. The lady will faint when they say, will you marry me? I said, before you put none that you marry each other. But it's good. All of us, we are surprised with you that you are surprised. You know, let's us oh. But actually, you have you probably, at a point where you have even asked that, wait, what's happening in this relationship? Are you going to marry me? You know, we all love all that, but we must also be prepared for difficult times. And the reason many marriages are failing today is because people do not know how to navigate disappointment. They don't know how to navigate heartbreaks. They don't know how to. Now, the first thing I want us to look, out to look at today is how to end the relationship. There is a way to end the relationship. If you look at the story of Mary and Joseph, you will see that 
Joseph was an honorable man. This lady showed up. She was supposed to be a virgin. And then she came up with one cock and bull story. An angel appeared to her. I mean, guys in the house, think about it. This is your pride. That this girl I'm getting married to, she's not only beautiful, she's a virgin. She now came one day and said, it's not only that, um, it's not a case of I lost my virgin. This is a case of I am pregnant. And you now ask her, that, who is, you now said, it's the only, it's only, you just said, you know what? Joseph said, you know what? I don't understand what you're saying. But there are levels I will never descend to. Let's put this away quietly. So there is a way to end a relationship. Number one is to pray about it. Is to pray about it. Let me tell you something. Don't mess with people. What did I say? Never think you have the upper hand over anyone. Never play that card. Because if you ever oppress anyone with whatever power you have, whether the power of a woman that has many suitors, so if you date this one and she offends, he offends you, you will say, I'm not interested again because another guy is waiting. Or whether you were a man surrounded by many ladies, if this one is not working, you're moving on to another. Or you are from a prestigious family. Please, never mess with people because the way you treat people always leaves them, always leave a mark. And God is a witness to how we treat people. God is a witness. One, people don't forget how you treat them. They don't forget how you talk to them. They don't forget what you did to them. Two, is that God is mindful of how you are treating people. And if you mistreat your ex, you may never get a man or a woman better than your ex. Yes. You have shown heaven that you are not mature enough to manage someone higher. If you mistreat your ex, you may never get a man or woman better than your ex. You may be stuck at that level. Because no matter how bad a person is in your own eyes, God created them and God cares about them. John 3, 16, we all know that scripture. It's a powerful scripture. It says, for God so loved the world. It didn't say for God so loved the church. It didn't say for God so loved the covenant people. It didn't say for God so loved the saints. It didn't say for God so loved the prophets. He loves the world. The desire of God is that even the wicked will turn from their wicked ways. So it is not in your hands to oppress another man. You pray about it. Before you open your mouth to say, I am not doing again. You pray about it. Many a times we pay attention and we are careful about saying yes. But we don't know that both yes and no are very powerful. They are very powerful. I have a personal principle. Be careful how you say yes. Be careful how you say no. Before you walk out of a relationship, be very, very sure that you are making the right decision. Because if you leave the right relationship... Because of a temporary problem, it can be your regret for the rest of your life. Oh, there are people who have been married for 15, 20, 25 years. But deep down, they wish that they are still with their ex. There are men who are married. You know, there was a guy that, you know, was asking me out. And that time, I just never clicked with him. And, you know, at the point, my mom was even like, this guy, I was like, he's a good person, he's intelligent, he has a good job. The days when working in oil company was like a big deal. But I just never clicked with him. He was married. He got married before me. About two years into his marriage, he called me one day and said, why exactly did you not date me? I'm like, hello, sir. This question is not appropriate. You are a married man. I can't answer that question because you're married. And sometimes that's how people get stuck in life. And from that point, I had to cut off our conversation. The only time we really chat is when he sends me happy birthday. I don't wish him happy birthday. Praise the Lord. So you must be careful. As a single lady, I said to myself, before I say no to a man, before I say I'm no longer interested in a relationship, I have to be sure, such that even if that man becomes the president of the world, the president of the country tomorrow, I will never look at him and wish I was with him. Never. Never. There is no man who has been my friend. There is no man I have had a crush on. There is no man I had a relationship with that at this moment before God and before man, I wish that I was with. None. 
Because let me tell you something. It is better that you don't create some challenges for yourself. Some battles are not necessary. Some battles are not necessary. So before you say, I'm not doing it again, I'm not doing it again, go and think about it. Pray about it. Especially if that relationship was initiated by God. Take time to pray about it. So that's the first thing you must do. And it is in the place of prayer that the Holy Spirit will tell you how to go about it. It is in the place of prayer the Holy Spirit will give you the right words. It is in the place of prayer the Holy Spirit will tell you the people to involve. Because sometimes we get into relationship with people that are abusive. And then the Holy Spirit will give you the right method to end that relationship. So number one is pray about it. Number two is to inform your mental pastor or coach. It is a dangerous thing to be in a relationship and not be accountable to anyone. But many people don't like not to be accountable because of the evil deeds they want to do. You don't want anybody to ask you, have you guys started kissing? You don't want anybody to ask you, are you sleeping over at each other's house? That's why you don't tell your pastor, Abby, am I lying? Answer now. Thank you, sir. And it's because so that you can easily dump one and pick up another one. So the pastor will not say, ah. I thought you were with Sister Titi. You know, say, actually, Sister Titi, you know, she's not yellow enough. I found the yellower one. We don't want to be held accountable. So before you go into, ladies, before you go into a relationship with a man, make sure that he has spoken with his mentor, his pastor, or his coach. Don't marry or date a man that is, see, for a woman, eh, if a woman is not accountable to anybody, and does not have any covering. It's because she wants to amplify and multiply her troubles. But if a man is not accountable to anyone. And is not under any covering. He has given himself the liberty to do of them. It is not good for a man. It is not good for a woman. Not to have someone that they are accountable to. But the person who suffers the most is the woman. Don't give yourself to a man that does not have anyone they are accountable to. If they don't honor their own parents. You think they will honor you? Some people, their fathers cannot talk to them because they now drive a Lamborghini. Because they now make some money. Their mother cannot talk to them. They don't really listen to pastor. They listen to pastor when pastor says what they want to hear. If pastor is not preaching good, they'll say, you know, these men of God, they don't understand. God understands. Don't yield yourself to such a person. So you talk to your pastor. Because sometimes the reason you are breaking out of that relationship is not substantial. Your pastor has gone ahead of you. Your pastor is anointed to shepherd you. And then your pastor may also know the right timing. To, you don't even know what that person may be dealing with spiritually. That they have informed the pastor but they have not informed you. And then you just walk to the man or to the woman and say, I'm not doing. And then increase the burden of the man or the woman. It is good that you inform your pastor. That you inform your mentor. That you inform your coach. And in informing them, they can help you with your weaknesses. If, for example, you have a, 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 a pattern of not staying long in a relationship, your pastor can say, do you realize this is your third relationship? Are you sure there isn't something you should pay attention to? He can even forbid you from going into any relationship. And say, for the next one year, I just want you to build yourself, take care of yourself, and stay off any relationship. That guidance is a preservation of your destiny. It's not punishment. It's not because you're a baby. And anybody can be guided, whether you are 28 or you are 35. It's even a blessing if you have people who are guiding you. You don't know. It's a mark of favor. It's a mark of favor. God does not like us to be lonely. When Adam was alone, God made for him an help meet. He said in, the, in Psalm 68 verse 5, he sets the desolate in families. When you are standing alone in the kingdom, God will order yourself and plant you somewhere. In that system, there will be a covering, there will be friendship for you. So when you live a life that is without covering, let me tell you something, it is dangerous. There is nobody who carries you in their heart. Pray for you. God can speak to you. I cannot tell you how spiritual covering has preserved me. Having someone call me in the morning and say, this is what I sense in your life. Sense right now. Sense right now. We're going to pray for the next three days. Going through a trying time and speaking to my mentor and he says, this is how you should look at this problem. Don't look at it this way. I would have made some foolish decisions, especially in ministry, if not for spiritual covering. 
So he's not a big girl. He's not a big boy. If you don't have covering, you're an orphan. Mm, you're an orphan. You need to pray earnestly. Lord, who is the man and the woman that you have sent to me? I am not joking. I'm telling you prayers I have prayed for myself. You can either grow by experience or you grow by wisdom. You go and do try and error, fall into errors, mistakes that some people have seen in their years that they can tell you. You know, if you are, have you ever been to a new venue before? Maybe you are going for a wedding ceremony. You now call your friend, Paddy, are you there? He says, ah, I'm there. You see that road. Don't take the one that everybody's taking, no. Just go and take this way and you get there gently, neatly, well. Meanwhile, some people that do not have guidance, they will enter portal. Their clothes will get dirty. They will suffer. Hmm? submit to people so talk to your pastor talk to your mentor and he protects you especially for the ladies the man cannot say certain things to you because pastor is involved he cannot say look at your crocodile head who wants to marry you before because he knows that if he says crocodile head you can go and tell pastor and the pastor will be disappointed in him so pray and tell your pastor number three have a face-to-face conversation with your partner don't ghost them don't ghost them. If you were bold enough to say, yes, I do. Please be bold enough to say, no, I doesn't. Mm. Have a face-to-face conversation. It leaves people in pain when you just, you know, some people don't even come back to say, I'm not doing it again. They just start acting funny. They just are manifesting. They are looking like, a baby, baby, you need deliverance. You just go, mm, ah, what? I'm busy. Mm. Then your friend is saying, What's going on? So I'm not dating again. Have you told him? And hey, she understand now. She has been calling me, and I'm not picking his calls. Ha! Ah, it's not honourable. It's not honourable. It shows that you have poor communication skills. And guess what? That's how you are going to act in your marriage, also. Yes. That's why you see some people, married couples, rather than have conversations with their spouses, they'll give their spouses silent treatment. She's angry with the husband. Rather than say, what you said yesterday, I don't like it. Dear, is my food ready? Ah, you can tell me in the kitchen. What? The man is wondering, ah, is food I asked for? And then we'll turn to the children. Kilo she yain. Who offended your mother today? Because we don't know. She's just acting like naked where if you touch her like this, you know, you'll just catch fire. And if anybody misbehaves in the house, you can collect any time. You can just you can receive your size, so you are not predictable. And when a woman or a man is not predictable, the children feel safe, unsafe around you. They don't know when they can come to you and meet you in a good mood. They don't know when they can come and you snap at them. So, in, God forbid, in the day that they are in a tight position and they need counsel, they may not be able to talk to you because they cannot predict your response. Poor communication skills. You are in the same vicinity, the same country, the same state. You now do a phone call to break a relationship. You have dishonored them. Sit down and have a proper conversation. And please, that conversation should not happen in a private space. Let it happen in a public space. Go to a park. Enter the auditorium. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Because sometimes... Some people, some Christian brothers, they can speak in tongues, but they can't manage their emotions. Yes, we have seen Christian brothers who start calling women names, slap them for breaking up with them, curse them for breaking up with them. Say, you, I'm, not even, I'm even managing you. You are even straight. You are not figure eight. I was thinking that maybe by the time I take care of you, you will manifest and be better. So be very careful. Don't do it in a private space. And some women can decide to pull a man down. She can just remove her clothes and say, even if I will not marry you, I will taste you. And let me tell you something. You flee from every appearance of evil. If a woman tries to do that, would you just kneel down and be begging and be praying for holy intervention? So that's why you don't do it in a private space. Do it in a public space. And it's best that you have a friend around not too far from where you are because sometimes it's not even about that person it's about you you can go and say i'm not doing this relationship again then when you get there you see the way it's fine and like how do you think i should break up with this boy again 
You just say, actually, I just wanted to say, you know, it's been a while we saw each other. And your friend is like, babe, how far did he go? He said, I didn't break up. Oh. I'm like, Meanwhile, you have seen reasons why that relationship cannot continue. And this person is already looking at marriage. So it's best you have an accountability partner and that person should be around, not too far. Let them know that there is somebody around. And then you need that emotional support also because the weight of breaking a relationship can be very tough. So you want to end and you need somebody that can say, you did the right thing. Let's go and take ice cream. Let's go somewhere to pray. So don't do it in a private space. Do it in a public space where you still have a level of privacy. Number four, be polite and kind. Don't shame or insult your ex. Be polite and kind. A lot of people go so low when they are ending a relationship. Especially when they feel that they now have somebody better than that person. You treat them like a nobody. You rub it in their face. You put up WhatsApp status that are very insulting. End of a terrible chapter. The beginning of the new. When God shows up for you, he shows up big. Sometimes you don't know what God is doing when he tells you to come, come out of Egypt. There is a promised land ahead. So she is Egypt. He is Egypt. But when you were chasing him, or when he asked you out one year ago, or when you were chasing her, that time she was your Goshen. Now she is Egypt. Don't break their hearts. Don't break their soul. Don't be the reason why everyone will be calling 911 over a soul. And they are trying to build that person up because you have torn their self-esteem. They are not even interested in their purpose. They don't feel like there's anything good about them anymore. You know some people, when they break up with them, they commit suicide. And we think that, oh, what's the big deal? Oh, you don't know the words they said to them. Words are heavy. It's better to be a fool when you are speaking. It's better to be slow to speak than to be quick to talk. Don't insult them. At least honor God in their lives. Don't insult them. Don't abuse them. Don't insult them. And lastly, follow your words with actions. Make a clean break and put the right distance. Don't confuse her. Don't confuse him. I'm not doing it again. You broke up with him on Tuesday. Thursday morning, you are calling him. Are you, have you eaten? So what will you take to work? Uh, I don't understand. Did we break up on Tuesday? If you are confused and you are not yet sure, tell him, I need a break. I am confused. So when you start manifesting confusion, he will not put his mind to it. He will know that this babe is confused. Back your words with actions. Don't say, oh, I'm not doing it again. Then you call and say, I just sent you chocolate and flowers to your office. And then you sent it in a, you added big balloons, the floating balloon. You gave it to the security. You even sent Parara with it. Back up your words with actions. Be willing to let go. The reason people do that is because they cannot, they cannot manage the vacuum. You know, that space that person was occupying before in their lives. So they, they are quick to fall back to old patterns. No, endure the pain because that's how you transform. You navigate that season. That's how you move from that level into the new chapter that you have opened for yourself. Don't try to numb the pain by just, you know, going back to that person, knowing that you don't have any noble intentions for them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, how do we deal with a breakup? How do we respond to a breakup? Like I said, the first, when I was talking about how to end a relationship, it starts with prayers. And let me tell you, prayer is not just closing your eyes and saying, Father, in Jesus' name. Prayer is a conversation. With, in fact, for me, I say prayer is a never-ending conversation with God. There is a time when you take out time to say, I'm praying. And then there's a time while you're doing other things, you're also praying. It's the same thing with a with a relationship between a man and a woman. There's a time a man and a woman will close the door to their room to say, we want to spend time together. We want to talk. We want to be intimate. We're going on a staycation. We're going on a vacation. Then there is regular everyday, babe, where are you? Have you gotten to the bus stop? Are you at home now? What are you eating? But you cannot say, oh, because we are always chatting, we don't need that 
time that we can dedicate just the two of us, the children are not there, we are good to go. That marriage will be weak. And you cannot say, oh, because we went for a staycation, because we went for a vacation, we don't need to talk every day anymore. That marriage will be weak. It's the same thing with prayer. There are times you must dedicate to praying for long hours. And you must also do the minute-to-minute, second-to-second conversation with God. You must pray. You must pray because the devil, your adversary, is going about seeking womb to devour. And he knows when you are vulnerable. He knows. You know, in t- I think it was in First Thessalonians or Second Thessalonians. Somebody can find that scripture, I would appreciate. Paul was sec- saying to the believers, he said that when you are mourning, don't mourn the death of a saint like people without hope. Can we remember that scripture? Because when you mourn without control, you know, scripture says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, has given us the spirit of love or power and what a sound mind. A sound mind is self-control. When you mourn without hope, when you give yourself to pain, no matter what you have suffered, I mean no matter, when you surrender to pain, it can become a demonic force. It can become a weapon in the hands of the enemy. We have seen women, because of the pain they felt from a heartbreak, go and give themselves to a man. In that moment, because they think by sleeping with that man, they can hurt somebody else. We have seen men who poison themselves just to hurt the person that broke up with them. Yes, we have seen it. So you must pray. And that's why you must have a vibrant prayer life. Before, during, and after. You will not, your natural response will not be prayer if you don't have a prayer life before. I don't even know how people survive without a prayer life. That's the truth. How people survive without a prayer life is beyond my understanding. And I'm not saying it's from a place of boast. Do I struggle with prayer? Yes, I I do. I'm human. I'm not a spirit. I pray by discipline, not because I have attained the height. But to think that I will ever get to a point where I would not pray, I, I can't do When I got here today, I have prayed at home. I have prayed over my sermon. Before I got down from the car, I, I prayed again because I have nothing of my own except what God gives me. When you pray, you make power available. The power to understand why. The power to navigate that season. The power to make the best of something that should have been a setback. I told you that when my ex dropped me at the gate, I was bouncing. I'm not joking. I can still remember the weather was bright and sunny. I was gisting with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you shall have to come this route that I must receive sense. That's because I, it, didn't take me, it didn't take me time. I discerned what God was doing. I realized that it was not the enemy that was against me. It was God who was covering me. I understood the situation rightly. So to another person, it would have been an embarrassment or maybe even a mark that she's not good enough. To me, I knew that that was a close chapter. I was not even supposed to go there at all. And so, so that I will not be misled for long, God just unveil everything and scattered it and say, let us expose this guy. That's the power of prayer. And like I said when I was, I was starting, heartbreaks happen in, a, in marriages. It does not matter how much, unless the man is an angel, unless the woman is an angel, she has wings, flapping wings, and she's celestial, or he's celestial, he will break your heart, she will break your heart at some point. Amen. Everybody say amen. Because they are not perfect. They are human. They are human. There are times that you even dedicate and say, I will do this for myself, and you don't do it for yourself. So how do you think that somebody will make a commitment to you and day by day they'll be able to fulfill their commitment? It's impossible. It's very unrealistic. That's why we have many divorces today. People don't know how to navigate heartbreaks. When you pray, you can see that, oh, this is why this person has to be out of my life now. And sometimes you can tell that this person has to be out for a period, but is coming back. You will discern accurately what is happening in the realm of the spirit. You will discern it by prayer. The things that are eating to you will be revealed. There are some people that the blessing that they need or they needed before they got married was a heartbreak. But because they were not prayerful enough, they did not get the heartbreak. I know a lady who waited, prayed, wonderful lady, amazing, everything. She got married, waited, kept herself, got married in her middle 30s. Three months after she got married, the marriage was over. And this is a man that they courted for over two years. 
So when I was talking to her, I said, did you tell your pastors to intervene? Because when it comes to saving your marriage, please, you do everything possible. Within God, though. Did you tell your pastor, I said, pastor, intervene? This is from a prominent church. The pastor intervened. The guy did not listen. Did you call the parents? Said, her mom went. Her mom went down on her knees. The guy did not listen. And then I asked, I said, tell me about the guy's family. The mother is single, has two sisters. The sisters are divorced. You see, when you look, you see, we, we, there are things our parents did we thought were old school. We need to go back to it. When you meet a man or a woman, you are not getting married to that man or woman. You are getting married to their history. You are getting married to their family patterns. You are getting married to the generational patterns. You are not just marrying David or getting married to Fumi. You are marrying a person that embodies everything that represents at least the past seven generations. So if you don't do your proper investigation, you would have been married before you know that you inherited certain battles. There are families where the men never buy landed properties. Never. They live in rented apartments till they die and they make good money. Once the money comes, if there's no problem, they will blow the money, go and do fadi. They never have the will. Never, they may have the will to build a good business, to be good at their business, but they never have the will to buy a landed property. There's no desire. And there are women who don't stay in their husband's home. Let the man be fantastic. They can even say, because you are fantastic, I'm going. Yes. Now, should we, is it that we should not marry such people? You want to go and give birth to an angel. Because let me tell you something, everybody is coming from something. But the right thing is to do your investigation and look at the battle that you are graced for. Amen. Uh, because let me tell you something, everybody is coming from warfare. This world is warfare. There are no perfect people. You look at the battle that you are graced for. And then you look at the willingness of your partner. This man is not his fault that his sisters are divorced and the mother is also separated. But she should have checked if he had the mindset of divorce and separation. You can know in your family that oh, all of them, they believe in premarital sex. But you know it is wrong and you are against it. I have friends who came from families where their parents would tell them, you are free to have sex. Just protect yourself. And if you, get, if you get pregnant, they will pay for abortion. It's not a big deal to them. Yes. As long as you are facing your academics, you, to them, they, they believe that you can't protect children again. They've surrendered to the evils in this world. But these friends of mine do not engage in premarital sex. They stand their ground. So even though they are living, if you go to their house during Christmas, you will see beer, you will see their brothers, their girlfriend. Even though they are living in such a home, they have separated themselves from the tradition and the culture of that home. That's what we are talking about. So you check where they are coming from. And that's why you must pray. When you pray, sometimes you know that, oh, this person is controlled by a greater force. Even if you never marry them, God can give you a burden to intercede for them until they transition out of that. And when you pray, you can secure your own mind. Because let me tell you something. The man that you should be married to, the woman that you should be married to, can make a wrong decision of walking out of your life. If you pray, you will secure what is yours. But we don't pray because we are proud. That's why we don't pray. Scripture says, if my people will humble themselves. So it means that if we don't humble ourselves, if we don't pray, it's because we don't want to humble ourselves. And is it true? When you were coming to church, that many of you prayed and said, Lord, please bring me to church safely, sincerely. Because it felt like I'm from Kena land, main gate to this place, how many minutes? But if you want to take a flight now, you can even say, is there a pastor on this plane? Say, Pastor, what, Larry, what, please pray for us, sir. Because from up to down, it's very, very far. But there are people who have left their houses to just go and buy something you know, two minutes away from their homes and they did not return. So prayer, please, prayer is very, very important. Prayer is very, very important. Pray immediately. And the prayer has, does not have to be religious. When he broke up with me initially, I sat down for many days just crying and talking to God. Why? 
Lord, I thought you were in it. And let me tell you something. The fact that you heard God concerning someone doesn't mean that he can't break up with you. Yeah. You can hear God, receive confirmation, see vision, and they can still say, I'm not doing it again. Because man has his will. Man has his will. And God cannot force man. There are people that God will call and reveal to them that I have an assignment for you. They will start the work that God gave to them. Two years after, they will tell God, I'm not doing it again. If they can tell God they're not doing it again, so who are you? Please, who are you? God created the devil. Made him one of the angels that will stand in his presence. He had instruments on his side and he woke up one day and told God, I'm not doing it again. Uh So who are you? Was it not God that looked at Saul and said, I found the king for Israel. I have chosen Saul to be king over Israel. Then Saul began to misbehave and God had to withdraw his will from Saul. So if somebody started out as the right man or woman for you, in courtship, in marriage, it does not apply. Yes, in marriage, the conditions are different. In courtship, and then the person begins to disobey the counsel of God, begins to compromise and all of that, God can instruct you to move out of that relationship. But in marriage, that's why you must look very well before you jump inside. And when you are inside, you cannot be sleeping. The one that you are sleeping from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. every day is very dangerous. You are going to be praying for yourself and your partner. In marriage, the grounds are different. When you are married, you are married for life, except on the ground of divorce. I mean, I mean, except on the grounds of adultery. That's what Jesus said expressly. And when your life is threatened also, he does not give ground for divorce in the church. He gives ground for separation. The man wants to kill you. We do not say you should stay there. If he's slapping you, it's Mike Tyson. And to carry your bag. Move to your pastor's house. I say, Pastor Tokpe, they have been slapping me, sir. <laughs> Let pastor call your family members and say, your daughter, please come and carry her. But you are not free to marry. A, it's a difficult it's it so let me tell you something the word of god concerning marriage seems very strict and hard abby and it's not because god wants to punish us it's because he wants us to be very careful before we make that decision but many times we are not careful when there is now trouble you don't want to do anyhow in god's kingdom you cannot do anyhow even in a corporate setting say for example hr slapped you you now close the door of hr's office you now remove your shirts you now call beating for HR. They now fired you. You now say, you not see that HR slapped me. No, you, it's not um, um, streets. You cannot do any else. If HR slapped you, there's a higher authority you can report to. So you can't say, oh, because the man, he is not doing this. He has side chick. Me to our well, side boy. No, side chick, side goods, have you? Side, side end. No, men are not end. I mean, men are end. Side pig. Because the man has side chick, I was side pig. So if you now turn your marriage to area, everybody's misbehaving. Doesn't work like that. So that's why before you enter, like my father would say, if you don't enter, you don't enter. Before you enter, take your time very well. Praise the Lord. Pray. Number two, remember who you are and who you are. The first thing that the enemy goes for, the first thing that pain will hit is your identity. You will begin to doubt yourself. You will think you are not good enough. You will think you are not beautiful enough. You will think that you should have been more perfect. Maybe if I was more patient. Maybe if I was more hardworking. Maybe if I wore brighter clothes. Maybe if I did. That's what will be going through your mind. You must remind yourself of who you are in God and whose you are. Hopelessness will want to come in. Oh yes, I felt hopeless when he broke up with me. I felt like a guy that was working in a whole company. One of the top guys in church sound guy when he preaches like this and handsome who who, who marry me again i did not know that about him that was my future waiting for me i was like that i felt that way i dropped my shoulders i couldn't carry myself with confidence i didn't feel like going to church i felt like everybody in church knew what had happened to me so if you don't even remember who you are, remember whose you are. You are a child of God. And you are not defined by the things that you go through. 
You are not. You can only be refined by the things that you go through. You are not limited by the things that you go through. You are not. You are human and you can make mistakes. The best of man is man at his best. A man of God is still a man. You can make mistakes. How you respond to your mistake will now determine whether it will be the limitation in your life or it will be a stepping stone to more. If we are going to look at people that make mistakes in the Bible, David made plenty. David was a correct bad boy. If David was my generation, he can never be my friend. Laye, laye. Like there's nothing. In fact, if he's attending one church, I will not attend that church. Even if he says, go to that church, I'll say I'm not going. Ah, you're saying, ah, somebody that took somebody else's wife and killed the man at battle. Number the Israelites. God did not kill him. God killed the Israelites for counting the Israelites. If God was going to, say God was not supposed to start from his house and start killing his family members. You're telling me, ah, ah. No. Someone that never corrected his children, not for once. He never, his children were spoiled. David was a great king, was a bad father. But David knew, God said David is a man after my heart. He knew how to respond to God. He was not too big to humble himself. He was not too big. Lord, I have made him say, I should not have entered that relationship. I am back. You can only come back when you know whose you are. You can only come back when you know that you truly belong to God. It is not the end of your life. I was in two relationships before I got married. The second one was on campus. And that one I thought I took my time. Kai, Jesus Christ. I thought that after the first passion that you do this time around now, I'm now an expert. Let me tell you something. The fact that you failed at one, at one relationship does not mean that you are now wise to enter another one. When that one failed, I could not go into any relationship. God had to use one of my lecturers to deliver me. He called me during my service and said, tell me, how are you doing? Then he said, is there any man? I said, no. He said, is it because of what happened on campus? I said, yes. He said, tell me, don't let that stop you. God has great plans for you. I was always afraid when a man came to me because I did not trust myself to hear God. I felt like, tell me, you have been hearing nonsense. You cannot hear God. Forget it. If you are going to marry in this life, somebody has to see a vision for you. And that's how people run from prophet to prophet. The enemy will steal from you more than a broken relationship if you don't have a vibrant prayer altar and you don't have a covering over your life. Who did I say called me right now and preserved my soul? My lecturer on campus, Barrister Jemilon. I was accountable to him. Some of you are on campus, no lecturer can advise and say, the friends you're hanging out with is not because you're a big girl, a big boy. Nobody else is your father and is your mother. Let everybody mind their business. Talking to someone is therapeutic. It gives room for validation. You need people that can look at you and say, you are awesome. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are better than this relationship. You know, one of the most amazing things somebody said to me one day, after you know, I was married, and he said he was the sister of my friend. Other sister, she had just been to the country. She said, ah, I was very happy when I heard I didn't mind that guy that you guys were together on campus. So he said, ah, because you are far better than that guy. That day, I felt like a big girl, not like, I felt like, I'm better, I'm a You need somebody that, your friends that will psych you up. They know that you are in a low place and they'll continue to draw you up, draw you up until you come up. Like the friend of the sick guy in the Bible, his friends broke through the roof to make sure that he found his deliverance. Sometimes you need to go for counseling. You don't feel like going, your friend will pay for a session, drive you to the session, wait for you in the car and drive you back. You need that solidarity. You need somebody that will look at you in church and send you a message and say, babe, you are looking stony. Or let me tell fine. Yes, you need people that will validate you. And even in marriage, it must continue. Your husband is not the only person that can validate you. My husband supports me. He validates me, but it feels different. When my friends come from my program and say, babe, we're so proud of you. Oh, this program was a success. You need it from your husband. You need it from your friends. You need it from your parents. You need it from your children. It gives room for support. And then it helps you to look at things the right way. It helps you. Sometimes people can see things that you cannot see. It's when the relationship is over, that's when they can talk. Because if they had spoken when you were seeing that relationship, you will pull out their eyes. You will not hear. 
So when they begin to tell you the things that you knew, but had not entered into your conscious mind, it gives you the right perspective. It gives you the right perspective. Praise the Lord. A heartbreak is not a setback. The end of a relationship is not the end of your glorious destiny. I don't care who the man or the woman is. If they were so important to your future, God would not allow them to walk out. That's the truth. If they were so important to your destiny, God will not allow them to walk out. And let me tell you something. God writes the most beautiful love stories. God does. Today, as I was leaving the house, I kid you not, as I was walking to the car, I said to myself, my husband is the best at husbanding. I'm telling you the truth. This weekend, I've had it back to back. On Saturday, very early, we had love outreach at a village. From there, I went straight to Abelkuta. I got home very late last night, very tired. This morning, we went to church. I got back from church. As we're coming from church, you know, we went to visit a couple. I pulled him back. I said, babe, I can't cook this afternoon. Meanwhile, you know, I didn't cook throughout yesterday. So I told him again, I can't cook this afternoon. I'm tired. He said, don't worry. We stopped at Chicken Republic, got food, got home, slept. As I woke up this afternoon, already feeling guilty that I have not cooked since, it's not even Saturday morning, since Friday evening. My husband was in the kitchen. He said, don't worry, I'll boil rice for the children to eat. If I had not married that man, hey, I would have had, I don't know where I would be right now. But let me tell you something. When they broke my heart twice, ha, you see the first one they served me, yo, what? And I felt like it was the end of my life. I felt that way. If not for my relationship with God that brought me back on my feet and kept me on my feet. And the second time, if not for the covering I have over my life. So when you go through heartbreaks, it's not the end. It may feel like the end. You may feel less than yourself. You may feel unworthy. You may feel like you are not good enough. But let me tell you something. That feeling will pass. But what you do with that season is very important. And it will determine what shows up in your future. If you accept what the negative feelings tell you, that you are not good enough, you are not longer worthy of love, because of whatever happened to you, you would attract less. But if you draw lessons from that experience to become a better man and a better woman, let me tell you something, you would attract the best. My prayer for you here is that no matter what you go through, nothing will take you from the path that God has ordained for you. And I pray for you that no pain will be too deep for God to heal in your life. That you would release your pain to God. You would trust him with your pain. Can we celebrate Jesus? Now we are going to be having our question and answer. If you have your question, please. Thank you very much, Ma. God bless you. Please, can you please say a very big thank you to mommy? Thank you. I don't know about you, but I was richly blessed. Um, very quickly, if you have any questions for our uh, mom, please, can you pen it down? Can you put it on paper? Or can you raise up your hands to make it faster? If you have any question at all, if you're in a relationship that you're not sure of, you can raise up your hand. <laughs> or if you're going through heartbreak and you need counseling, can you raise up your hand? Okay, if you have questions that you are shy to talk about, like our sister that came out before, can you please just go to the back i know that we have counselors on ground to attend to us right um our father our pastor pastor tokumbo and his team will be readily available to attend to us but if you have any question or something to say can, you, can i see your hand okay no no you can please take the mic thank you Hallelujah. Praise Amen. The Lord. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, ma'am. I was telling a friend here that uh, this is actually the first time of being physically being under your administration. I'm right here, ma'am. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, my question might appear a little bit uh, weird, but please just uh, bear with me. You know, you said a lot of things, and what I take from your words are the fact that the experiences we get from breakups 
actually makes us wiser, stronger, and better. Now, I am this young lady, very innocent, and I find myself with this wonderful man, very innocent. I have a lot of friends. I'm not actually getting any bad experience in this relationship, but when I attend programs like these, I'm very naive. And then I just decide to want to say, let me experience what it means to have an ex. Yeah, that's why I said it's weird. And then, like women now, being very unpredictable, apologies to all our mommies in the house and our, our ladies. Ma'am, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Now, such tendencies happen, and then the guy will be wondering, Kilun Shelley. So, how would a lady who is in that category get to learn that your first relationship can actually be a good relationship and not to want to experience an ex, ex experience or my past relationship experience? Praise the Lord. Okay, um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a very, very valid question because um, some people have the mindset that. Their first relationship will not lead to marriage. Some people come in and the mindset with which you come into a relationship will determine the success of that relationship. Now, if someone is in a relationship and they feel the need to experiment, you know, some people are in a relationship, they feel the need to experiment and break up and go and try other person. Some people are like, I'm not even sure if there's a better man out there for me. Some people are like, okay, um, let's do something weird is because they came into the relationship with the wrong mindset. There is no spiritual maturity. There is no emotional maturity. It means that in the beginning, there was no conviction concerning that relationship. That's why you are able to be dilly dally and experiment with the relationship. And that's why it's important that if you're getting into a relationship with someone, the person comes in with their own conviction as you come in with your own conviction. If you have a revelation, your revelation is not enough to sustain the two of you. Let them go and pray and have their own revelation. Let them have their own conviction because the conviction is what will keep the relationship. Conviction is what keeps everything in life. If you are no longer convinced, you're going to let go. So such a person is not convinced. And if you're in a relationship with somebody who is amazing, fantastic, but decides to leave because they need to go and experiment and they show that they don't have conviction, God has saved you from a lot of problems. Yes. If, for example, a woman has no conviction and she just says, I know you're good, you're kind, but I just want to know if there's somebody out there. If you had married such a woman, every time you have a challenge in your marriage, she will not be a support, she will be a nagging voice. She would only say, oh, only God knows. Why is this happening to us? Let's go. If, for example, you have a delay for the fruit of the womb, that kind of woman will never have a strong moment. She will come up with all kinds of theories. So someone can be good and lack conviction. A person who is good and lacks conviction is a potential for trouble. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Ma. Because of our time, we'll be taking just one more question. Yes, I saw his hand first. We have more than one, I know, but we are, we are hoping, and I know I'm speaking the mind of everybody by saying that we hope to see mommy again another time, right? Yeah. Uh -uh, the yes is just one person. Yes, right. We hope to see another time. So, the questions will definitely be attended to, but because of time, we said we are closing seven. It's already past seven, no? Abby, you don't mind? You say to eight. You don't mind? I'm hearing contradicting answers, but um, let's first take, I would, you know, I'm under, I'm under leadership, right? I, I, can't, I can't go beyond what they have told me to. I'm sorry, please. One more question, and we will have to call it a night. Except our pastor says otherwise. So please, um, sir, please. Okay. Praise the Lord. Mommy, God bless you. And God bless Pastor for inviting you here. You see, why I say God bless you is this. How I wish I know you when it happens to me. Praise the Lord. Because that day, I, in fact, I pray God for me to forget that, for, that's, to forget that day. Because after what I heard 
from someone that has been with me for a long time. I was at Ikorodu bus stop for four hours. Rain beat me. Umbrella is in my hand. I don't know that rain is falling for four hours at Ikorodu roundabout. I'm telling you. So what, what she's saying is pure truth. Rain beat me for four hours at Ikorodu roundabout. I didn't know. I have umbrella in my hand. My phone was in my pocket. I have my money. People were passing me. I stand like a pillar. I don't know. I, I was lost in thoughts. But it took me time and the grace of God to survive it. Thank you, my God bless you. Sorry, please. Okay. Please, I'm sorry. We can't take one more question. Hey, okay, okay. My pastor has said one more question. Please, every question that has been written, we'll make sure we give it to mommy today. We'll post the responses on the group chat. Yes? Well, <laughs> I can see plenty of hands. But I'll be, I'll be unfair. Ma? Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Ma. Um, during your teaching, you made mention of having mentors. And I, I for one, know how important it is and how instrumental it could be for one to have mentors in his life. So I want to ask you, yeah, you, meant, you also made mention of prayer, prayerfully getting mentors. So aside from prayers, now how do, or how do I as an individual practically seek out mentors? Is it proper for me to just go ahead and just meet maybe a man of God or somebody or somebody maybe at the office I need you to be my mentor in this in terms of relationship now that's why I want to okay. that's another brilliant question I think we should applaud ourselves we're very brilliant people so um, please can we tone it down so um, to get a mentor one of the things you can do if you for example if you find someone that aligns with your values you have to know why you, what you need a mentor for so you can need a mentor for business growth. You can, need a, you can need a mentor for marriage. Because some people can be fantastic at business, but, you know, marriage, they're not so there. So, and you know that these people, there are boundaries in your conversations with them. Now, the easiest way to connect with people and get them invested in your life is by serving them. A lot of people, you know, you get DMs, messages. I want you to mentor me. I want you to mentor me. You are asking for my time. I'm not going to take out... I'm not going to leave my purpose and the work that God has given to me to now sit down and begin to mentor five, ten people personally. The best way you can get in the view of anyone is to get into service, is to be a part of whatever they're doing. Many of the platforms and the people that have access today, I kid you not, is by serving. And sometimes you serve in the shadows for a long time. Many of us start by serving. The moment you don't get recognition, you don't get appreciation, you disappear. Sometimes I serve in the shadows. You bring ideas, nobody mentions your name. They don't even know you exist. But if you remain at it and you stay there, you are going to get the recognition and the access that you desire. So the, you are not going to get anybody's attention. In fact, the best you can do is for them to mark you as probably someone that will disturb them. If you just walk up to them and say, I want you to mentor me. So every time I see your chat, I'm afraid to respond. If you say good morning, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe next, if I respond, I should not say, please, how do I explain Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6? And if I don't respond, there will be trouble. But if I'm a part of a project and you are with me on that project, I can see that you're a person of value. I'm reading your character. I'm reading your presence. I'm building trust because mentorship is also access. It is access. There are people you give access to and then see finish just happens. They just come in, they know certain things about you and they are running about with the information. So if you see people who are really up there, they want to know your character. They want to know if they are able to trust you. And the best way you can prove your character and trust is in a place of service. So you know somebody, a pastor, that you want to be close to the family. Tell them, sir, um, what do you do? This is what I do. And then before you can say you want to serve someone also, you must be a person of value. So be, build yourself so that when you eventually get into a conversation with them and they say, oh, I've been seeing you around, you can tell them, I do this, I do that, this is what I do. 
there is value. You are bringing value to the table. You are a person of value. Then you begin to find ways you can serve them. Oh, sir, you didn't pack your car very well. Oh, it's Christmas. I brought this gift for you. Service and gifts is very important. Then you also pray. Then lastly, one thing you can also do is to join their mentorship platforms. I have a group for ladies. I don't have for men. Singles group where I talk to the single ladies. And we have the wives beauty parlor. We have the singles eye. The wives beauty parlor. We talk about a lot of things and deal with a lot of things. Sometimes some people even send me questions. I post it in the group. We all look at it together. From there, you can begin to access people. But what is important, if you're going to get the attention of anyone, no matter how great, especially the people you consider very, very big, you start with service. Bring good value to the table. I'm telling you, there's nobody you cannot access with service. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma. With the permission of our pastor, we had taken just one more question from a lady. I can see the men's hand again. Ah, <laughs> the violent they get it by force. Okay, one written question. Okay, so which one is from the lady? Wow, this, this is a lot. Okay, I'll quickly read this out, right? Um, you received an heartbreak on your birthday, and he complained because my phone was not going, and he said he can't trust me. I think it's me she meant to say, not her. And brought back past events, situations that has been settled. Thinking he has moved on with that. Started bringing up all the past events. Then few days after, he apologizes, took her out, and wants her back. What can she do? He's spiritually sound. He supports her vision, but she is scared of him not trusting her for little occurrences. Let me tell you, what's the measure of spiritually sound? How do you know somebody that is spiritually mature? By <laughs> Rakabo Let me tell you something. Spiritual maturity is tested first in character and response to the things of God. A person can have loud tongues, wear cool, you know, carry themselves like this, be very quiet and not be spiritually mature. By their fruit, not by their gifts, by their fruit, you will know them. He broke up with you on your birthday. He does not care about you. He wrote it in capital letters. He was so filled with his own pain that he did not bother to give you the decency of celebrating your birthday and after your birthday, come and have a conversation with you. And then you still followed him out. He even took you out. Where are you? Let us beat you. <laughs> Is it the meat pie or the chicken? A man disrespects you so audaciously. He broke up with you. You know what it means for somebody to break up with you on your birthday. A day you should be celebrating your existence. He made you cry. Made you shed tears. And you are still saying that he's spiritually mature. Is it because he's holding microphone? <laughs> no, please. When a person is spiritually mature, one of the fruits they have is patience. They can temper their emotions. And wait for the right timing to have conversations with you. And wait for the right ways to have conversations with you. He brought up past issues. Let him go and resolve the past issues. For me, that relationship already died. If he's going to, if you're going to have another, if you're going to have a relationship with that same person, he must come as a new man. He must come as a man that has grown. A man that acknowledges that he did not treat you right. Because let me tell you something. Relationship is made up of two imperfect people. If your spouses treat you the way you deserve, that man or that woman is not for you. They must treat you the way God will treat you. Even when you make mistakes, it must, be, it must never take away your honor. It must never take away the love and the respect and make you stop for that love. So what will he do in marriage? Please. Don't bother about that, brother. Move on with your life. Thank you. God bless you, ma. Thank you. You know, somebody has been raising up his hand. He was the first person to raise up his hand. So they gave the mic to somebody else. I'll be unfair not to give him the mic. Please and please, should I give him or should I not? 
Thank you. Please, uh, I, I don't know why your name is skipping my head, but please give him the mic. He was the first to raise up his hand. I saw him from here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, I want to ask this question. So you had a relationship with a lady. You guys broke up. Then, um, you know, she's always missing you. You understand? <laughs> After the relationship, you try to cut off distance. But she could just text in the middle of the night. Oh, sorry. She would just message. I wouldn't reply. She said, you don't want to text us, happy. Or it was a mistake. Around 12. You understand? And you try to call this and she's like, we are not fighting now. Okay, we are not together again. Doesn't mean we can't talk. Is it? <laughs> so how do you manage an ex that's always missing you? <laughs> she is still an ex, right? She's not looking for a relationship with you. <laughs> who, who ended the relationship? Okay, so um, I think I'm um, actually... Okay, let me say it this way. Before I ended it, I spoke to somebody. You understand? The person is here. You understand? So he advised me to just quit. You understand? So it was, it was a deliberate stuff. You understand? Okay. It was it might have ought her to be very sincere. But I ended it. Hmm. So you have good reasons to have ended the relationship. So to speak. So you have to block her. Let me tell you something. When it comes to... We need to see things the way they are. When it comes to relationships, listen carefully. When it comes to relationships, you are always fighting for your destiny. I'm telling you. God uses people. The devil uses people. If you have your reasons, and I want to believe that your reasons are rooted in your faith for block and for breaking up that relationship. I'm not saying she's on a demonic assignment. She may not understand why you broke up with her and it is normal for her to miss you. It is normal for her to long for you. But you are in a vulnerable place. If you continue to give her access, you may go back to what you walked out of. And since she has not found the strength to close that door, and say that this relationship is over, you can block her. You are not offending her. You are protecting yourself. You cannot say, no, but we are not superhuman beings. You say you don't want to date someone, but you are hanging out to that person. They are calling you. Eventually, you're going to date them. You block her, you will tell her, I'm sorry I have to block you for a while because I need you to really move on with your life. I am your friend, but I'm not ready for friendship right now because I still have feelings for you. If we try friendship right now, we'll go back to that relationship. And I must obey the instruction of God for me in this season. When you are in that place where you know that no matter what she says, you will not be moved by her words. She will know because you can easily send her a birthday gift. You can show up for an event, for a business, and nothing will be involved at all. But right now, you need to block her. You need to put that gap there. Because even from the way you speak, I can tell that you're still fond of her. And it's normal. <laughs> It is absolutely normal. It will be strange if you break up with someone and you are no longer fond of them. It means that from the beginning you never liked them. It is absolutely normal. So she's coming back because she's missing you and it's normal for her to miss you. If she continues to come back, she's always texting you, calling you. One day she's going to send a message that will move you. You don't want to see that message that will move you. My mom is in the hospital. I fell from the bike. My arm broke. You think you are the only person that can save her. Block her. When you are healed, you are stable, you are in a place where you can manage your emotions, you can unblock her, and when you unblock her, you don't need to tell her I've unblocked you. The day she discovered, then you will start your conversation. Thank you very much, Ma. Please give mommy a round of applause. If you are celebrating the grace of God upon her life, you can make it louder.